He is altogether lovely. My meditation of him shall be sweet. My beloved is the chiefest among ten thousand, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips, O God. God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Whom, having not seen, you love. In whom, though now you have not seen him yet, believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory for him who is yet to appear. I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ and be found in him not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through Jesus in the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of by God in faith alone. Hey, what's up, Chers? What's up? Check it, dude. Man, I'm like kind of chilling, you know. Have you figured that one out yet? If you're not chilling, then you're not thrilling. And if you're not living it, then you're not loving it. And you know what? If your life is kind of like caught up into all the anxiousness and all the anxieties and all the kind of worries and frets that you see everyone around you doing, bag it. <laughs> I'm serious. Man, you're losing it, dude. You're heading in the wrong direction. You know, I see so many ministries, so many ministers. I see pastors and elders and deacons and... Well, quite frankly, the children, the sons and daughters of God, losing it because they're not using it. You know, losing that Holy Spirit that we've been given, you know, the comforter, the joy that God has placed within us of our salvation, the realization that, wow, we're living in eternity. We have got not just a promise, but we have got an assurance that, hey, Check it, dude. Guess where I'm headed? Heaven. Man, I'm just passing through here and I'm not I'm not getting too tied up into anything around here. I'm not going to put myself in debt lest I have to be thrown into the debtor's prison. I don't want to have any debts hanging over my head when, you know, it's time to leave this place. I don't want to have any, you know, like assets that are wearing down my, you know, um, rewards because I'd rather not have my assets now, but I'd rather keep them stored in a place where moth and rust does not corrupt. So you see, I have a light touch on this world because I plan on leaving it soon. Now I hear a lot of people tell me, you know, like they they got to take care of their yard, you know, they got to take care of their house, they got to take care of their dog, their cat, their 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 four hundred one k, their retirement account, you know, their education fund, you know, the church. Oh wow, forgot about that. And the ministry, yeah. Oh well, you know, we got to get that done. Oh yeah, you know, and the groundskeepers, you know, and the taxes and this, that, and the other thing. And you know, I don't see them so happy. I don't see them as behold or blessed. I see them as kind of like blessed it, but not blessed. You know, they blessed it, you know, the things that they got, the things of the world. Oh, bless it, God. Bless this, my ministry. Bless that. Oh, my work. Oh, bless that. You know, all these things that I'm caught up into. But you know, I don't know about you, but I kind of like the idea of being blessed. You know, oh, how happy. <laughs> Dig it. Oh, how thrilled. Yeah. Oh, how joy-filled. Uh-huh. You know, when I look around, I kind of look at somebody and I go, hmm, when was the last time they smiled? You know, they'll tell me, you know, like what they're doing, you know, and I'll go, well, all right, you know. That's how you get excited, you know, your fantasy football team or your television sets, you know, or your iPads, iPads, iMads, or this, that, and the other thing, you know, and they're always wrapped up, thumbing it, or gumming it, or losing it, or, you know, using it, or choosing it, or whatever they're doing. But I don't know, you know, they're not laughing, you know, they're not singing, you know what I mean? They're not dancing, you know, they're not rejoicing, you know. The Bible says to rejoice in the Lord always. 
And again, I say rejoice. You know, I mean, it was like, yeah, cool. Let's be happy. Let's choose the way we will go. And you know, in the Jesus movement, that was one of the things that I always could tell a person who was talking with and walking with Jesus was because they were joy-filled. You know, they had a smile on their face. You couldn't really bring them down to the ground because they were always kind of like, you know, smiling. You know, they kind of had this... You think I'm going to get worried about that kind of stuff? No problem. And you know, these latter days have kind of put me in perspective. You know, I, I looked at Chuck Smith's memorial, you know, and I got to listen to some of the pastors, you know, and some of the senior pastors, you know, that have been around like where I've been, you know, that sat under the same people I sat under, that kind of were doing the same thing I'm doing. You know, and they, some of them, I've watched over the years, have kind of lost their joy, you know. They kind of lost some things by getting involved in these mega enterprises that they're involved in. But some of them still got it. You know, some of them still hanged on to it. You know, Bob Coy, I think about, you know, like laughing and bapping and, you know, kind of like bopping and, you know, doing his thing. And he's like all over the place. You know, he just can't keep that guy down, man. He's just like laughing. You know, and Greg tells his stories, you know, sometimes, you know, with Bob and Greg go back and forth, you know. But I was kind of amazed because when I look at, really, most of the people I see around me today, I don't know where they're coming from. I'm not sure, for sure, where they're going. I'm pretty sure they're saved. But I don't know. Maybe they're just going to get through it, you know, by the skin of their teeth, you know, and hanging on for dear life because they're not always so happy about it. You know, oh, you know, some of them are very professional about it. You know, they keep the kind of things hidden inside. But, you know, if you got the gift of discernment, if you got the word of wisdom inside, you got the word of knowledge, you know, and you got all these gifts, you look at someone and you go, nice fake. <laughs> Faking it till you make it, huh? Cool. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Be at peace. <laughs> Keep me away from that one, huh? You know, Chuck's made that a way of saying that. You know, it's kind of, I love it because Chuck was always like, all right. <laughs> I was like, man, I'm so thrilled to be under the spout where the blessings come out. I like to be in the center of God's will. You know, I mean, that's what Chuck used to say. You know, hey, you don't care where it's going. Go with it, you know. Go with the flow, and then you know. But if you're not in that flow, you'll know because you don't show what it is that God said you should be. Full of joy. Full of peace. Full of love. Now, there are people that are saying, Oh, I love, you know, and then you watch them and they get provoked by some practical thing and you go, Where'd the love go? Woo! Pew! Right out the love boat. Yeah, yeah okay, you know. Yeah, I could see. Yeah, well, you know, you're probably keep Keep crying and keep, you know, kind of worrying and stressing, you know, and like, well, you'll get there. You know. But, you know, Jesus came to give us life, not just eternal life and knowledge of the Father, which he did. You know, he came to say, look, you see me, you see the Father. This is it. You want to know the full story? You want to get the complete picture? I'm it. And God said, this is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. What about the prophets? Well, yeah, you know, they're there, but, you know, listen to him. What about the law? Well, you know, yeah, it's there, but listen to him. What did Jesus say? I didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets. I came to fulfill. So, on one hand, I see people that are doing a lot of religious things, you know, and they get all kind of like, well, you know, we gotta, we got to get this done, and we got to get that done, and we got to be this, and we got to do that, and we got to, you know, and they got this little, T -t 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 -t, you know, they check off all their little check marks, you know, and they got their... Their way of doing things, you know, that maybe that makes them happy. Wow. That's one way of being happy about it. wonder if they're ever going to get to the joy filled so their joy full. Because, right, frankly, <laughs> you know, not so much so, you know. I understand you need a worship service. Can you take six or seven worship services and call me in the morning? Please. Please. I don't want any of your misery. I mean, what, what's up with that? You know, I mean, are we so fearful of being Pentecostal that, you know, we don't want to be evangelical? You know, I mean, there's something about the good news that was good about. <laughs> I'm not going to hell. Woohoo! Isn't that good? I mean, really. What is the reality of what Jesus said? What is the fact of those believers who were willing to give up and sell everything they had 
And by the way, in case anybody ever tells you that you know the church doesn't do that, oh, pardon the expression, hell yes! <laughs> there are lots of us who have done it. I'm quite frankly one of them, you know. Hey, you know, guess what? Forty years later, I'm not regretting a single moment. And I know the benefits and the blessings that that was to the people that received that with which I had done according to what the Lord said to do. Don't tell me the book of Acts was like, you know, hey, back then, you know, well, they did it and they blew it, you know. No, the only thing they blew in the book of Acts was they didn't get out of the city when they should have. You know, like, hey, sell all you have and then go and follow Jesus and go out. And that's what we do as missionaries, as Jesus priests, as people that are occupying but not taking over the land. You know, people right now, they have this whole idea that somehow they want to save the nation, save their school, save their societal system. we got to save democracy. It works so well. Really? Wow. I kind of thought Daniel kind of put a kibosh on that one. You know, I was like, ah, this ain't working so good, you know. I thought God kind of put the kibosh when they first picked a king. You know, I said, well, you know, look, you're going to have a king, then you're going to have, you know, like, kind of like weaker kings, weaker kings. Finally, you're going to have democracy, you know, miry clay, you know, kind of like what we got today. You know, kind of like, it ain't going to work so well. But, you know, that's what's going to happen, you know. And then finally, the king is coming. Woohoo! So, I'm kind of always interested in all these things that people get involved in. Because it's supposed to make them happy. Really? You know, I used to laugh because Romain, although he kind of sometimes popped, people thought he had a scowl on his face, always had a little twinkle in his eye. It was kind of like a little sparkle there. You know, like, eh, you know, he was like, I get, to, I get to counsel people and beat them up. No I'm kidding, that's not the way Romain thought. <laughs> Romain would counsel, but he would come out of it and be blessed because God was speaking to him during the counseling. He would relate that. I go to church even today and I keep, keep thinking, man, I walk out of church and there are some really bummed out people. They are not thrilled. They are not joy filled and they are not going out in the power of the Holy Spirit or, you know, blown out by the message so powerful that they're so wonderfully excited that they want to share it to everybody around them and the good news is such that they're going, oh yeah, check it out, man. This is so great, man. You got to come to church. Check out the message. You know, I was worried about that for a while. You know, I mean, I'll admit, hey, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not knocking the church I'm in. You know, people got learning curves. You know, and this is like kind of like a new time and a new place and a new person. You know, so it's kind of like, you know, there's a new kind of like, you know, thing going on. You know, it's kind of like, you know, the millennials. You know, they got their own little shtick, you know. And when you grow up in the church, you know, you've heard it all. When you've been around, you know, different churches and ministries, you know, and you've been a whatever kind of, you know, person you were, you know, well, you've done it, so, you know, you don't need that joy anymore, you know, you've got to be no crazy, you know, kind of goofy, you know, you know, never mind that we always done it this way, we always got to put up the words, you know, I'm sorry, we got to do it, oh, okay, what if we just started laughing and singing, you know? oh, no, we got to get to our goal, you know, well, okay, you know, We'll go there. I don't care. You know, we're in Egypt. You know, let's go out the desert and wander around the wilderness for a while before we finally get Joshua. You know, and the singers to kind of like do their thing. You know, so we don't have to fight the battles. You know, oh, if it ain't smooth, it ain't in the groove. You know, that's what we used to say. If it ain't flowing, it ain't ain't going. You know, and I'm quite frankly, you know, I stand back and I go, I listen to people tell me things, and I go, okay, I'll do it your way. Now, I'm not going to tell them what my way is or, you know, what God's way is speaking to me about, but they don't ask. And I don't have a problem with them not asking. You don't want to know? I don't want to tell you. Uh, you know, I'm not going to pray about it. You know, it's like, okay, you know, we're going to bless it. Bless this mess, oh God, we pray, because God, we need you to take care of it today, you know. Yeah, let's look at the mess to begin with. Um, Who's working on this, and are we ministering to them through this practical reality that we have in front of us? Or are we just kind of like, oh, well, we got to set this up for someone else to use, you know, so that way, you know, God can use it, you know, God can work through it and minister. <laughs> and I'm not against, you know, technology. I'm not against the practicality or the reality of, you know, like using all these little tools, you know, but uh, it's only a tool. Put the tool down, be you, be happy. Be thrilled. Be joyful. Be kind of like, you know, not telling the same story a hundred times, but 
Tell the glory of what you found out today. What did you learn today when you got up this morning? Was it cool when you walked in the service? You know, it's like, man, you know, I was talking to the Lord today, you know, and I found out that, you know, God wanted me to share this. And I just want to tell you guys about what it's so like to have Jesus in your life every day. To be able to hear His voice, to be able to walk in His will, to be able to know that when I come into this sanctuary, I have got the chair set up and I am blessing each one of them. I am so thrilled that God has used me and allowed me to be your pastor, and I'm so thrilled that each and every one of you have come here today because I am looking at your faces, you know, and I just want to bless you. Let's get into the Word together. Let's enjoy the goodness of our God. Let's participate in whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. Let's don't just commit it to the God and leave it alone, you know, and go there. Let's be thou an example of a believer, you know, that we believe in this stuff. But <laughs> we're joy filled. You know, I, I quite frankly don't think that they ought to start a service, you know, anywhere at any point in time until everybody's laughing. You know, I mean, not giggling, you know, or being so, you know, gift of laughter, like, you know, that kind of weird stuff that Vineyard did for a while. You know, sorry, Vineyard, but, you know, you kind of went off tangent. But quite frankly, you know, the reason why Sunday mornings are so dead is because they're dead. Dare I say that again? The reason why Sunday mornings are so dead is because they're dead. People are not happy. We need to be joy-filled. Hello? You know, it's not a dirge for Sunday morning. Now I'm going to beat you to death because you have come expecting to hear this and we are so formal and we are so cleaned up and so straightened up that we can't get down and get round and get about and be about and have so much fun. Of course not. We're dressed up for it. You know, to sit here. God. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I look in heaven, you know, and I kind of go, God, where'd Sunday morning go? I'm looking at this picture, Lord, you know, and I'm I'm kind of like reading this book of Revelation, God. I'm going, first thought that comes to my mind, Father, is just, you know, what did you do with Sunday? Where did Sunday go? Where's the bride? Where's Jesus? You know, I want to know what happened to Sunday. Because this ain't the Sunday that I saw down here on earth. It ain't like anything that I saw on earth. Matter of fact, everything up here in heaven looks totally different than what I was told on earth. Maybe we should make things more like heaven than we should make them like earth. You think? You think? Maybe? You know, kind of like, that's kind of what, you know, like the Jewish thought was. You know, hey, ooh, God, you want to put tabernacle, you know, like heaven? Heaven, you know, you want to bring heaven down to earth, you know, and make it a symbol of what heaven is like, so we're prepared to go to heaven, so we got a tabernacle to worship in, so we can pray through the tabernacle, so we got the showbread, you know, that represents Jesus, we got the, the menorah that represents Jesus, we got the uh, altar of incense that represents Jesus, we got the altar of sacrifice that represents Jesus. Matter of fact, it all represents Jesus! Whoa! Cool! I don't know about Sunday morning. I see the lyrics, you know, and I see the pictures, you know, and I go, well, that looks like Jesus. I think. But you know, I'm not knocking it because it's like, well, it's good. But then you kind of go, well, are we going to develop this? You know, are we going to stop what we're doing and say, hey, can we stop this for a sec? Hold the hold, hold horses, everybody. Try this with you. Try this with me. Clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Clap your hands, all you people, shout unto God with the voice of praise. Hosanna, Hosanna, shout unto God. You know, like a Jesus freak. Or are we just kind of like, ooh, we got it down. Put the organ back on. We got to get a few more, you know, pieces of instruments. You know, let's get an organ. Let's get, you know, maybe a dirge going. Maybe we could throw some country western. Maybe we could do all these things, you know, that... I got a better idea. How about we just get joy-filled? How about we just, you know, before the service, let's see if we can't wait on the Lord. You know, ooh, can I bless you, Father? Can I bless, Father, can I bless the pastor? Can I, like, like tickle his fancy? You know, kind of like, tickle, tickle, tickle. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I've been around a lot of pastors for a long time, you know? And the ones that succeed have a smile on their face. They have a joy in their heart. They are so ready on a Sunday morning that they are, like, blessing the people. I mean, don't get me wrong. They go through the trials to keep that blessing because, try, frankly, I know. I watch the people come in and, Man, I can tell you what they're going through because God tells me what they're going through and I'm praying, oh God, don't let that infect the people. You know, holy, 
Holy moly, Lord, you know. There's pride, there goes ego, there goes lust of the eye, there goes lust of the flesh, there goes, you know, oh, that guy's got pornography, you know. Oh, that person's got, wow, adultery? Oh, man. Yuck, ooh, ewe, God, protect them, keep them safe, you know, kind of work on them. Oh, no, but we got to bring it all to repentance, you know. It's like, well, all right, let's be on a downer, you know. Can I tell you something? This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will. And I don't mean like Satan said, I will ascend to the heaven. Of, I will do this. I will do that. I'm saying, dude, you know, if you want to be thrilled about what's going to happen in the very near future when everybody's going downhill, you better be going uphill right now and getting some more joy in your life because didn't we just read about that? Didn't we just talk about that? Isn't that what God is about today? Wasatcher, check it. He is altogether lovely. Oh my God. Open my eyes that I might see. We used to sing that, by the way. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch him. We don't even sing those songs. We sing some kind of modern day songs that are all like, oh, they're spiritual songs, but they got no power. I'm sorry, you know, they might inspire you for a moment, but you know what? They sure don't bring a lot of people together, you know, coming to unity of the body of believers and faith and worshiping, and they don't go out the door singing the song. Let me put the iPads back in. Let me put the iPad back on. Let me put the earbuds back in, you know, and then we're, oh, now we're worshiping. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, I'm just out of the. Out of the sudden inspiration of like, Jesus, Jesus is a friend, he's a friend next to you. Jesus is a friend next to you. Jesus is a friend, he's a friend next to you. I mean, what is worship? Isn't it like out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and out of the relationship that you have, you just can't help but offer up praise? Praise ye the Lord, his mercy endures forever and ever. Praise ye the Lord our God, his mercies will never end. Great jump in Jehoshaphat. I mean, shouldn't we be doing something like that? My meditation of him shall be sweet because it's my beloved. Is he your beloved? Is he really? 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 I mean, come on now. What are you talking about? Football? Baseball? World Series? Halloween? The latest, greatest prayer meeting? The latest, greatest worship service? I don't know. What are we doing here? Are we talking about Jesus? I want to know about Jesus. What's Jesus doing in your worship? Has Jesus shown you how to play guitar? He did me. I'll let you know that if you ever want to ask. And then he took it away one day, you know, when I got arthritis. But, you know, it's like I can still play a little bit. I'll go get it. If you want me to. What's it about? If it's not about Jesus, what are we doing here? Why are we doing this? So let me clarify something for you, Wasatcher. I don't care where you go. And I don't care what you know. I don't care who you think or what you think. What I do care about is who you follow. Follow Jesus. All the days of your life. Learn to develop that personal relationship with him because the churches, quite frankly, don't always follow through with what they say they will do. They try. And church is a great place to practice religion. Church is about religion, always has been. It's about the religious practices of putting faith into demonstration of who you are to prepare you to go out into the world to be a witness and to be a light. Well, if it's kind of like a downer or a church, you're going to see the church slowly dry up, you know. If it's not a wellspring, I mean, sure, it's a nice place to be a hospital, like some people say. And part of the church is, you know, a little hospital wing, you know, it's kind of like got a part that's for the hospital, you know, and you kind of heal them, you know, and fill them, you know, and bless them and send them out, you know. But there's also a part where it's rejoicing, you know, like the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice. I mean, whoa, 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 <laughs> thinking about that one song, you know, where did we go wrong? Why aren't we part of the song? Where is the singing by way of just automatic adoration coming out of our lips by the inspiration of the moment of just going for it? Or do we have to pick up our guitar, plug it in, make sure we got sound checked down, you know, we're going, I'm ready. I'm worshiping now, or I'm re really, I am. I'm a worshiper. 
Really? The Father is looking for those that will worship Him in spirit and truth. And I'm quite frankly honest with you. That ain't the kind of people that's sitting in church. No offense to, you know, the church. You know, I mean, there's great musicians out there. But the greatest of musicians will tell you that their worship comes in their personal time alone with God. Their songs that they record and put out there, some of them, you know, will be, you know, good or whatever. But you find the ones that, like the Rick Mullins or the Keith Greens, the ones that last, that have written things, or the ones that were like in Luther's day or from the Methodist day or from, you know, the denominations that we do have them and they're still lasting today. They come from an adoration of the heart that wasn't sat down in order to write a song about, you know, something they went through. It was about that spontaneous combustion of the Holy Spirit inside them that exploded out like a dynamis upon their environment that they had to write it down. They had no option. It was so overwhelming to them that it was the joy of their heart, the desire of their spirit, their want and their passion to do that. Are you passionate? Are you so set in your ways that you're just kind of like, well, you know, you got it. I'm excited, but now I'm wearing down. You know, it's been about a half hour. You know, kind of winding down now. You know, so Got to not blow the people out. Take care of the people. Blow them out. Bless them. Bless you. Hey, come here. I want to shake you. You know, I spent the day recently the way God told me to. A guy told me he says, uh, "I want to." I told him, I said, "I want to get together with you and, and talk about worship." You know. And I told him that. I said, you know, I want to get together and talk about worship. You know, so the guy got together with me, you know, and we talked about Jesus. We talked about his personal relationship. We talked about discipleship. We talked about counseling. We talked about the Word of God. We talked about everything except for the sound. Now, we did add some parts. You know, I threw in little tidbits. You know, said, well, you know, the sound is like this, and this is how it works. You know, this is what it's like from Scripture. You know, this is how it works in Scripture, and this is how it works on soundboard. You know, and it's like, in out you got you know what you got coming in you have to adjust so that what's going out is correct you know kind of like what we do with the word of god you know it's like you don't just spew but you choose and you use according to what the holy spirit inspires you to do if your soundboard isn't really led by the spirit of god it's going to be obvious oh soundboards are led by the spirit of god yeah, I'm sorry. God knows how to make sound. You know, that's what he did in the first place. He created the heavens and the earth and the soundboard. You know, inspired men to do it, but they had to adjust themselves to it. It's a poor imitation of what the reality of the exaltation of what worship is in heaven, but in the reality of the truth of the fact of the matter, I could take you through a soundboard and put you right into the Word of God. No problem. And that's kind of what I did with this guy, you know, and I was sharing with him, and, you know, I was like, you know, I, I didn't know what was going to happen, you know, because I wanted to get to know him, you know. And I sat with him, and we talked, and we visited, you know. We spent the whole day together in Jesus. The Lord was with us. The Lord was there. God was speaking to both of us. We shared intimacy. We shared reality. We shared things from the Word of God and things about our life, you know, and things that were moving forward and things to think about. And you know what's funny is about a week later, maybe two weeks later, I think it was about a week later, he came back to me, you know, he talked to me, and he says, I gotta talk to you. I went, uh oh, what did I do? Lord help, you know, am I in trouble now? And I said, oh, yeah, Jesus freak, Jesus dipsy, here we go, you know, <laughs> crucified again. Okay, I'm ready. What? What do you want? Go ahead, give me the cross, I'm ready to die. And he said, Remember when we were talking? Oh no. <laughs> okay, he says, you know that part that you said in the scripture about, you know, Oh, yeah. So God got you, didn't he? God's working on you. Like, oh, I couldn't stand it, man. I had to get up. I studied. I went in the Word. I'll do it. I went. And I was like thrilled. It's like, yes. Do you get it? That's what worship does. It brings you to the place of wanting to know God more. Woohoo! It was kind of thrilling. So, if I could inspire you, Wasatcher, if I could tell you something more than what you may be hearing, if I could give you good counsel, if I could give you the heart of worship that the Father desires that they would worship in spirit and truth, and it's not like truth is the word, spirit is God, you know, and that somehow you got to combine the two to make it music, you know, and kind of come up with this, you know, weird kind of like interpretation. 
Hey, man, it's just like the Spirit of God moving in you and telling the truth. You know what I mean? Let's be real. Does your worship suck? It sucks. It does your worship minister? It ministers. If it doesn't, well, you know, guess what? Get out of the front row, sit in the back, and start watching. Oh, maybe if we had the lead singers in the back of the church blowing the doors off of the people in front of the church, they would hear it in their ear and they would begin to sing louder or sing more or get more enthused and get more involved. Or, if, guess what? You sat next to them and you said, put an arm around them, blow their minds, walk through their insecurities, bring them to the place of the holiness of God, bring them into the heavenly kingdom, bring them your love and pour upon them your anointing oil. You don't wait for someone to ask for it. You go and give it to them and bless them and blast them out of their self-preconceived ideas of what they think they know as opposed to who they know. Oh, i got to wait for God to tell me. Yeah, right. God said go. <laughs> what more do you need? The last words were go. Do it. Be it. Live it. Share it. I don't know for you, Wasatcher, you know, if you really want to go through the winter miserable, do you really want to go through the winters miserable? Do you really want to go through like life kind of like down and out and crying out and you know kind of like wandering in the wilderness, you know, kind of like desert, you know, place, you know, going, man, I just wish that I had what those guys had back then and there and where and if and but. It ain't that. It's right now, right here with him as he is. He is altogether lovely, altogether wonderful, altogether glorious. He is Jesus. He is what we're about. You want to know Jesus? Talk to Him. Walk with Him. Fellowship. Rejoice. If it says rejoice, do it. I don't care if you got hard rock, you know. Find a Christian hard rock. I don't care if you got, God forbid, you know, psalms and, you know, hymns. Well, you know, if you really got to go there, play the organ. You know, whatever it is that enthuse you to open your mouth. You know, I heard somebody recently tell me, it was funny because he says, well, you know, you don't want me to lead worship. I went, yeah, I do. But I, I don't have the ability. So, but I'm not one of, you know, I'm not a worship leader. I don't care. You know, those are the ones God uses. You know, God knows because it ain't the person who is skilled that the people are following. Skilled musicians come and go. You know, I've seen them. A lot of prima donnas out there, you know, no offense to them, but you know what? When it comes to being filled with the Spirit of God, eh, they got great talent, but when it comes to Spirit of God moving in the hearts of people, you know, causing them to come into the presence of God, eh, not so much. So, you know, somebody tells me, I, you know, I don't, I don't worship God, I don't sing, you know, and then I watch them and they're worshiping God and they're singing, I'm going, I want him! I want him! Give me that man! You know, that man knows what he's doing. He's raising his hands, he's praising the Lord, you know, he's singing, might even be doing it in tongues, who cares? But, you know, whatever he's doing, I want him up front. I don't want, or in the back, you know, behind the people. I want him leading, or her leading. I don't want some professional musician, oh, I gotta keep playing and practicing and getting it and getting it and getting it, and I don't got it. I sing good, you know, I got the voice of angels, you know, well, that's nice, you know, so does Satan, but, you know, so does angels, but, you know, I'd rather you had the voice of God, you know. You know, no offense, but you know, I'd rather you sound like a frog, but the frog knows how to rejoice. Both frogs and butterflies have both been born again. Woohoo! I mean, quite frankly, when you get enough people singing, who cares what it sounds like? Once everybody's singing, all the disharmony becomes harmony. Did you know that? Yeah, all the off notes become full notes when there's all notes being involved. That's why the full spectrum will quite frankly, blow your mind when you find out that that works in um, soundboards. <laughs> well, anyways, we won't go there, but how do they make this new software that can make you sound good? Well, it's because full harmonious, full harmonies, you know, you can harm harmonize, you know, the disharmonies, and it's just a long way of mixing, but anyways, we won't go there either. When you got everybody worshiping, hey, you know what? People come out and go, man, that was cool, you know? Worship, uh, church was great. Instead, if your church is saying, you know what, I'm glad to see you. You know, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you came. I'm glad you did this. I'm glad you did it. You know, or like, hey, let's go out to lunch. You know, quite frankly, I, I, I avoid like the plague on a Sunday morning going out to lunch because, quite frankly, 
If I'm going out to lunch, I want to talk about Jesus. If I'm going out to lunch, I want to talk about the service. I want to talk about what went on in the service, how God moved. I want to talk about people with their hurts or their needs and ministering to them. I want to talk about what the pastor said and how it applied to my life and how real it is and how God is using it and how God is working and how wonderful it is to be in the place where I'm at because God sent me there. If I'm going out to lunch to eat, then I'm sorry, but you know what? That's out to lunch, as far as I'm concerned. It's not working in the spirit. It's working in the flesh. And I'm glad that you've got to get the flesh fed, you know, because quite frankly, I know you got the spirit fed, you know, and now you want to go out and feed the flesh, but I don't want to. I want to keep going. Can we, uh, like, check out the pastor and set him aside for a while? And can we put up, like, you know, anybody else that wants to go ahead and give a message now? Go ahead. I'm ready. I'm listening. Take over. You know, I love the pastor. Don't get me wrong. I love what the pastor's doing. I love the pastor's wife. I love the church I'm in. I love everything that's happening and occurring. But it's just the same old routines. You know, it's like, well, guys, you know, churches are doing this all over. What makes us different? Why are we special? Because we teach the Word of God. I could go down the street and do that too. You know, I mean, everybody I know is doing it. Everybody knows they're doing it, doing it, reading the Word and chewing it, chewing it. I mean, everybody's doing it. We got to... We got to go out and do like Calvary does. We got to get the worship service and we got to get the word service and we put it together and we got it. And you know what? Assemblies of God, uh, Foursquare, uh, AOG, Baptist, I mean, you name it, right down the line. You know, I can go down through Utah now and find it all over the place. Everybody doing the same thing. What is that difference, that joy, that peace, that love that qualified and quantified the Jesus movement? Because it wasn't just about calories. Because wherever you're going, be blessed. But I'm saying to you, Wasatcher, when the sun rises today, I want you to look at that sunrise and think of something different in your life. I want you to not think about the church you're going to. And, you know, well, i got to go to church, you know. Or I want to be a part of that, you know. Or I want to be a part of that. I want you to think about one thing when you look at that sunrise. How glorious are you, Jesus? How glorious may the Son of Righteousness rise with healing in His wings. The Son of God Righteousness rise as the Son of Righteousness rises over the Wasatch Mountains. You look at that sunrise today and think of the Son, not just the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. Because that's what it's about. It's not about, really, church and playing church. Because that's really what most people are doing. They're playing church. You know, they're, they're, they're playing at it. You know, it's just, yeah, you know, okay. Yeah, it may be your vocation, it may be your avocation, it may be your, you know, ordination, it may be your designation, it may be, well, we lay hands on him, let's hope he wakes it, you know, okay, okay, you know, it's going to make it, you know, one way or another. But the point is this, your joy is being stolen by the world and its ways. The day is being created by God to cause you to accept be thankful and look at it as glorious and magnificent in what His will is for you today. Today. I don't care if today's Sunday. Today's, God forbid, but you know, today, <laughs> sorry, I don't like Sunday mornings. If today's Sunday or Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday or Saturday or the end of the month or the beginning of the month or Halloween or Thanksgiving or... Rosh Hashanah or you know Yom Kippur or any other holiday or holy day that you can think of or whatever day because every day is the day that the Lord has made he wants you to rejoice he wants to come alongside you God inhabits the praises of his people why are we bumming out then oh well he's going to inhabit while we sing one song twice got it down okay you got it down for you. hey I'm willing to come up and say you know what can we do that again Let's let's sing that song. Let's let's take the next fifteen minutes and keep singing that song. You know, uh, come here, worship leader. I want you to go and run that one again. Let's keep going until you know the Holy Spirit says we're done. I don't want to keep the people, you know, past their dead time, bedtime, you know, or I don't want to keep it past my message time. Oh, I've got to get the word in too. Hello, if it's the Spirit of God leading, the Spirit of God will get the word in. Keep it short. Get rid of the stories. You know, keep with the Word of God. I one time gave a service one time, and it was kind of interesting, was that God said, here's what I want you to share. Tell the people, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and then they can go home. 
I said, God told me to share this, so Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, now you can go home. And people looked at me like, is that it? That's what God said. Okay. And so they started worshiping. And we had a beautiful, wonderful prayer meeting. I mean, a worship service. It was wonderful. It was like an afterglow. It was like, wow. And God used that, and people talked about Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. You know, to this day, I still use Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, but not necessarily in that same way. But, you know, it's a home Bible study, I'll admit, you know, so it wasn't quite in front of a church service, you know. I would have done the same thing, as all these Spirit said. But what has God said today? Literally, let's be honest with you, you know, you and me, come on, let's get, let's, let's, let's get, let's get to the nitty gritty. Were you listening today? He is altogether lovely, altogether wonderful. He is what? Jesus. He is the Son of God, the Son of Man. You've heard the Word, but are you a doer of the Word? Are you living it? Or are you just pretending? Because the contention that I have about the joy-filled life, about the person who knows the Lord and is full of joy, is that, are you full of joy? Are you rejoicing in the word that you've heard and you know what God wants for you today? This being the day that he made, that he says, you will rejoice and be glad in it. Will you rejoice today? Or are you pretending and contending for the faith without ever really being the realization of the word of God living and alive and well in you? <laughs> you want to know what I got? You want to know how I keep the reality of what life is all about? Happy Valentine's Day. Stuffed animal. Did you hear what he said? Happy Valentine's Day. Stupid, huh? Or is it? Is this a token of faith? Is it a manifestation of something that I can look at and say, I see the Lord in that. I see God as a smiley face looking at me and saying, I made you. I want you. I have provided everything for you. I have given you love. Would you just not receive it and enjoy it? Be thankful for it? Be blessed? Isn't that what we started with? Oh, how happy. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the humble. Blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness. Sake. Blessed when all men shall revile you and say all manner of evil against you. Falsely for my sake. Oh, how. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, how happy. Oh, how happy you have made me. Oh, how happy you have made me. Yes, it's Jesus. <laughs> also Jesus. You know. But no, I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm happy. I'm thrilled. I'm going to heaven. I got lots of reasons today to be in pain. And man, this sucker is killing me. <laughs> so what do I do? I laugh about it. That don't make no sense. <laughs> but this arm is like, I'm dying. I'm dying on the vine here, Lord. Would you please heal the stupid thing? <clears throat> but the reality is, why? Why be bummed when you've got eternity? Wouldn't it be better to have a song in your heart? A joy in your life? A spirit of God living in you? both to do and to will of his good pleasure, which is today to rejoice. Well, Satcher, go forward. Don't go back. Don't don't lay back. Don't don't get back into the world. Don't don't get caught up and be bummed about your debts or your sins or your things that so easily beset you and distract you and attract you and get you off track from where God wants you today to know one thing. Not salvation, you know, you know, if you're not saved, get saved, you know, get over it, get with it, and get on it, you know, otherwise go to hell, you know, or go to heaven, I don't care. Waste my time, I don't, you know, I'm all about rejoicing, you want to rejoice, great, come on along with us, if you don't, go to hell, hey, you'll be rejoicing down there, not, but, you know, you think so. So, let's get real, if you're a Christian believer, you know, if you're a believer, you know, if you're a Christian, if you have been told to rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, if you've been told this is the day that the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. What's your problem? 
Why aren't you rejoicing? The root word of rejoice is joy. I got this joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I got this joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Oh. <laughs> really? I mean, hey, if you got to become childlike, oh, isn't that what Jesus said? Except you become as little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Isn't it time we dumped our sophistication and got back to the realization of what the Spirit of God is trying to do in our worship, in our praise, in our joy of the Lord? If the joy of the Lord is our strength. There's some weak people out there. You don't be one of them. Rejoice in the Lord, always. And again, I say, Rejoice!